This is Twit. Did you uh, did you fall in love with this tiny, shiny, happy? Actually, I guess uh, Jim did the review in this. Did Jim fall in love with this tiny, shiny, happy portable SSD? I, I I talked to him about it. He didn't sound like he was in love. I mean, I think he was interested. I think they need to spend more time together to really find out. <laughs> they haven't used the L word yet. Is I guess what I'm trying to say. Um, it's it's fast <laughs> though. Like think about the the previous generations of this. And actually, Alan might have been on the show when the T5 came out. That was the previous version. They went from T1 to T3 to T5 and now T7. So they've been doing odd numbers. And this is the latest generation of their small, portable, fast USB SSD. So it's this little right. device. Actually, by today's standards, it looks like a portable battery charger. But it's this right. little like aluminum enclosure, a little bit bigger in profile, like the footprint is a little bit larger than a credit card and it's like the thickness of like seven or eight credit cards stacked on top of each other. And it uh -huh. operates at very fast, like the latest USB 3.2 Gen 2 interface, 10 gigabit. It's not like by two, 20 gigabit or anything, but 10 gigabit, it, they advertise speeds of up to 1,050 megabytes per second. And that's huge because previously they were, limited by the SATA interface, so you weren't getting any more than 550 megabytes per second with the T5. And in fact, the T3, right. which I bought on Alan's recommendation back in the day, that one I think tops out at like 400 megabytes per second. So they've gotten faster over the years, and this is no exception. They, they've started using like PCI Express-based storage internally instead of SATA. And mm -hmm. they're pretty much pushing the limits of what you can get from the 10 gigabit interface. And I know it's duck soup when it comes to not duck soup alphabet soup some kind of soup when it comes to usb <laughs> standards anymore that's kind of duck soup sure. because it's usb 3.1 and then it's well it's 3.1 gen 2 and well now it's 3.2 gen 1 versus gen 2 but not gen 2 by 2 which is 20 megabit per second or gigabit per second instead of 10 gigabit per second so if you can figure out what standard you actually have uh unless you're using something with um a very high end two by two or Thunderbolt connection, then this is probably as fast as you're going to be able to support externally anyway. I have a very like right. a late model 2019 laptop and it will only do only do 10 gigabit per second, even from the type C port. So uh, this will pretty much push that as far as it can go is my point. Cause I think theoretically that interface can only go up to about 1.2 gigabytes per second. And this is just over one between one and 1.1. So I'd be surprised if we saw stuff that was pushing much higher speeds than this. But it's it's a nice enclosure. And it the interesting thing about it is that it has security via an integrated fingerprint reader. So this is a Samsung device. Think about like the back of a Samsung phone that had a fingerprint reader, but that's the top of your drive. And you use their software sure. to register your fingerprint a bunch of times from different angles. And when when it's done... You have this device that only you can access by tapping your finger on it. So that's that's nice. You could carry this around, not worry about losing it if you had some kind of uh, you know private data on there or you know financial records or something. So it would never fall into the wrong hands. It's hardware encryption. So a lot of these things rely on software encryption if if you want encrypted data on them. Which was, you know, it's kind of a nice thing. It does add to the price, though. That's kind of the only drawback that Jim had about these when he reviewed them is it's a little mm -hmm. pricey. It's I think it's one twenty nine ninety nine for the smaller five hundred gigabyte model, and then it doubles, almost doubles to two twenty nine ninety nine when you go up to the one terabyte, and then the two terabyte, which is not available yet, that's quite a bit more you're up to $400. So, I mean, it's it's really fast. If you if you Google or just go on Amazon looking for professional grade portable SSDs that are that are just like direct connect with a single cable like this. Uh this is about as fast as you're going to find. Like 1000 megabytes per second. The last one I looked at was a Lexar Pro Drive and those are 950 megabytes per second and actually didn't quite it came very close. It came close to hitting that when I tested it, but this is the fastest one that we've tested. And really, if if you value 
security, the built-in hardware security with the fingerprint reader, I don't think 229 is that outrageous for a like quote unquote professional level drive. It's just that sure. we would tend to roll our own where I would buy like a NVMe enclosure on Amazon for like 30 or 40 bucks. They've actually gotten a lot cheaper recently. And then just buy my own one terabyte NVMe drive around hundred dollars and then put those two together and you're spending a lot less money than the Samsung. But you know, th those can be kind of hit or miss. And I will say that the ones I've used, they get very hot. Those little yeah. NVMe enclosures. Almost as a rule. Hot. Yeah. And that was one of the things that Samsung said. They, they put a lot into this particular enclosure for heat dissipation. It's an aluminum enclosure, but it's got a, a bigger heat pad and it does kind of evenly disperse heat. They claimed it would never get any warmer than, I think they said, 60 degrees. Uh, Jim never saw anything over 40. So a lot of it's going to depend That's on the environment. Impressive. Yeah. So just for that alone, I mean, it doesn't get super hot and it's got the built-in fingerprint reader if you want to use it. So at that point, 229 for one terabyte doesn't seem insane. It's just a lot more no. than you get if you put one together yourself. Yeah, but you don't get a fingerprint, like a you don't get the security on it, the fingerprint security, and you don't get the thermals. Um, True, yes. And I, I think the thermals for me, I, I've... I feel comfortably that I've uh, I've managed to kill at least one SSD uh, with a really poor enclosure. Um, you know that is anecdotal, not factual. There are any of number of things that could have killed that SSD, but I don't think the enclosure it was in was helping. Uh, it's interesting to think about.